What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes, it was actually for May 31st, yesterday, they did come out one day early, as I'm sure you noticed, Tuesday instead of normally Wednesday, they do resume, resume normal Wednesday release moving forward, it's not a permanent change. Uh, that being said, we are one week away from getting the Arena of Solar, which is being released worldwide uh, on the 8th, and with that we have a lot of class changes that were previously introduced on the Global Labs uh, to kind of coincide with that, as well as some PvE balance that's going on as well and that is the majority of what we have for uh, the patch notes a couple other notable things but first let's go ahead and take a look at the events and see what we have going on first up we've got pouches and mysterious night return the pouches these are the, one of my absolute favorite uh, events because you can make a ton of money both grinding extra stuff and uh overnight fishing all of a sudden makes money the rarity pouch and fortune pouches that you get that have uh, golden seal accounts and enhancing materials with memory fragments uh tons of ancient spear dust and all sorts of stuff a lot of extra money to be made um, throughout that one. So we've had that before. Mysterious Knight is the 300% skill XP NPC that spawns while you're grinding every so often. So you can talk to him if you're trying to get some extra uh, SP on a character or maybe looking to level up an additional character or something, something along those lines. We have the Utterly Great Milk Day event uh, that exists. Uh, so you can interact with dairy cows at the different farms um, to do the milking mini game as per usual. And in this case, you're going to get additional milk. Uh, along with it and then you're also going to get the nutritious haystacks for login rewards we've actually seen that before i think it was around this time last year uh, that we saw uh, those put in I, I actually still have them in my um, login reward when you press the y key to redeem them because i never did so they're still sitting there maybe a share your black desert memories uh, event kind of an offline sort of event uh, if you want to get entered uh, entered into that you post uh, um, different things to either youtube or facebook for it you get uh, entry you're going to get uh Blessing of Old Moon, which is the value pack along with uh, Blessing of Common Silver and Old Moon all combined into one. Uh, and then it looks like the top 20 winners for it are also going to get 12,000 pearls uh, for having the best one. So if you're into that sort of thing, definitely a good opportunity to try and pick up some free pearls if you have a great memory. Anyways, uh, moving on to the class changes. Now, some of these are pretty in-depth, so we're going to outline some of the uh, larger changes rather than reading every single line here to give you a kind of feel for each class. Um, if you just want to check out specifically yours, there's timestamps uh, for each class broken down individually, so you can just click on that one uh, if you want to. Otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and get into these. Uh, so first up for warrior uh, didn't have much of a change here a little bit of uh, extra damage on their black spirit skills a uh, little issue fix with some skill add-on uh, problems there rangers really nothing to speak of there uh, sork we do see some stamina nerfs that were brought to awakening um, these were actually a little harsher originally on global labs and then dialed back a little bit uh, but overall sork seem not super happy about that we see succession getting some pve damage increases as well while maintaining the same amount on pvp damages almost all these pve increases you'll see the pvp damage reduction rate was uh, increased to uh, keep it the same overall PvP damage. Uh, that's for almost every class across the board. Uh, Zerker, we do see protection changes, which was uh, not uh, very surprising at all. It's getting some forward guards on super armors that were previously kind of r ridiculously powerful, especially large-scale setups there. And we actually see some awakening damage uh, increase on it, a little bit of skill change improvement as far as uh, using the giant leap effect and the range that's on it as well. Tamer get, does get a lot of damage increase uh, and cooldown reduction. Uh, excuse me, a lot of PvE change for damage increase and cooldown reduction on a few skills. They actually pick up a new skill as well called Assimilate, which can do a lot of different things depending on uh, the bird setup that your bird setup, the uh, pet setup that you're using for it. Vermilion bird, black turtle, white tiger, azure dragon, all have different effects. So you can apply debuffs. Um, you can apply DP debuff. You can gain DP and recover HP uh, for hit per hit while using, or you can uh, put some burn damage on depending on the setup. And they've all got different animations, uh, which they kind of lay out for you there. Uh, but that's kind of the gist and what we got there. Musa, we actually see a stamina cost reduction on quite a few skills, which is interesting. This is for succession and main setup. Uh, and then in the succession setup, we get uh, some PvE damage boosts to quite a few skills as well. Maywa did not get any of that. <laughs> and Valkyrie also not much to speak of there. Kuno, we have stamina nerfs and also some uh, cooldown nerfs as well. Increased cooldown on a few a uh, few skills, notably Flash Slash there, and uh, Dance Macabre getting a massive uh, 200 stamina change on that. So the mobility on this is a, quite a bit lower than it used to be. Um, it was pretty needed, but this might have been a little bit too much, uh, in my opinion. I mentioned that one was on the Global Labs, and it didn't get modified after that. Might be a little bit too much uh, stam heavy, but we'll have to see over time. 
Uh, moving over to Ninja, we do see some PvE damage increase, mostly for succession set up there, kind of across the board. Just issue fixes, really, with the Awakening. Nothing much to speak of. Witch Wizard, uh, kind of in the same boat there. Just issue fixes, really no uh, notable change. Dark Knight gets some PvE buffs in the Awakening set, um, both in increased damage and also modifying the skills uh, a little bit, and um, then we see Succession getting PvP buffs, and one of those being a brand new skill, or rather a Succession version of a current skill, um, so that it gets a, an extra extra little bag of tricks, as well as getting 50% critical hit rate applied in PvP on Wheel of Fortune, uh, which is a lot of damage. Uh, they did adjust uh, chaining some skills together. Obsidian Ashens are supposed to flow a little nicer. And here we see the revamped Soul Snatch skill and Grip of Grudge as well, which was the PvE changes for Awakening. You're not really using those in PvP if you like staying alive. Uh, over to Mystic, we've got PvP damage uh, buffs in the Awakening set uh, only there. Lawn, um, as well as Archer and Shy, we just see some issue fixes across the board. Uh, Guardian, not really much of a change, kind of a damage orientation, uh, lower amount of damage on the front end of an attack, and then more damage on the back end, kind of coming out to the same. Hash sees a lot of damage buffs for Succession uh, across the board. Uh, a lot of their skills uh, got boosted in damage, which was pretty pretty well needed. Uh, Nova, we get uh, a little cooldown buff and crit rate and the uh, speed at which certain skills are chained together, all in a Succession set being boosted. And then PV is getting a little bit of a damage boost and then has a new skill that's a super armor with a minus 20 DP on it as well. Um, so that now exists. It's called Excel Frozen Ring. So that's pretty interesting to see. Uh, Sage was a little bit of a weird one. This was mostly protection changes and then the way that some of their skills interact. They did remove collision on Rift Chain, uh, but they also kind of changed uh, how you're going to use Rift Chain specifically in Awakening. Um, so you can, it can be activated with your Cabelius during Bolt's cooldown, which is a thing. Um, and then we also see a change which seems to have mixed reviews on it to Impaling Flash. Um, so now that you're, you're going to return to where you started when you used it, but the distance on it was also reduced by 25% and then it, it'll have a little reduced interaction when it's at a different elevation. So there's that. Moving on to Corsair, we get a lot of succession PvE damage buffs, a uh, little some buffs in cooldowns uh, by reducing cooldown for it and also a few skills that are supposed to link together uh, a little nicer both in the Succession pre-awake version and uh, also happening in the Awaken. Should be a little better skill linkage, um, comboing some skills together there. Uh, Draconia, we've got a dev note on this. Um, and then other than that, mostly combo, smoother combo or skill linkage. Um, supposed to be a bit better, but let me read the dev note here for you real quick. Draconia's offensive and defensive capabilities were somewhat overtuned since it was possible for her to break the enemy line while withstanding a number of enemies when her Markathan's scale and Markathan's heart skills were comboed. While maintaining Draconia's high AP, the recovery effect of Markathan's heart applied during Markathan's scale was adjusted for the balance between her AP and viability. Uh, and then we see across almost all of her skills improved uh, improved to combo more smoothly into other skills. I haven't actually tried that out uh, myself, so uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Moving into content updates, we have some updates to the uh, composing or musical stuff that's in there if you're into that. Uh, we made some quality of life improvements to the music album content so that our composing adventurers will be able to compose with greater ease and in record time. We'll continue to look for even more ways to improve on the music album even after this latest update. We'd like to thank all of our brilliant adventurers who busily compose their hearts away in the world of Black Desert. Uh, so quite a few quality of life uh, improvements here. It's on its way to be in the new FL Studio, I guess. BD Studio coming soon. Um, or something along those lines. Uh, item and monster updates, nothing to speak of there. UI updates, though, we did get a couple of pretty cool things. Number one, you can now view the autumn item drop rate amount that you currently have applied on it by either going into your My Information window, the P key, or the item scrolling, um, hovering over the item collection increase gauge will show you what your total drop amount is, on, is at. And then we also get to see the numbers that were forever hidden um, as far as how much is increased by your attack speed movements being critical hit uh, and then the life skilling stuff as well. Um, notably, I always thought crit at level 5 was 20%. It's actually 18%, uh, but at least, you know, six years later, they finally show us that that stat. So that's in their movement speeds, 20% at level 5. Uh, we already knew that was insanely important, but now they're actually showing it to us instead of just disappearing. Did have some tweaks to how you can uh, adjust your character name, monster name, and, and uh, character's HP gauge. Those are all separated, so you can choose which ones uh, you want to put on there. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. So let's jump on over to the Pearl Shop. Take a look at what we got going on this week. First up, we have probably going to be one of the most popular outfits that has been introduced uh, almost ever, but the Human Mancer uh, Sork outfit is released. You can tell it's going to be pretty popular just based on 
the horn design i'm pretty sure is what it is uh, as usual premium set version of that's 3400 pearls we've got karak overlays uh, that are available we saw this in the uh, kr uh, update video from last week that's on there and they came out right away but there's four different types and they have all kinds of cool glowing effects when you're speeding along with them they're 6370 pearls if you want to pick those up uh, we've got some packages available. The teacher's pet pack is 2,200 pearls. You're going to get a, your choice of three different types of birds and some feed to go along with it. Then we get Boston's Hardies, which is also 2,200 pearls. Uh, again, going to be your choice of three different uh, piratey type things. Jojo, Buzz and Jack, Turtle, and a stone Stoneback Crab, and some feed to uh, go along with that. We see EXP coupons available and on sale for barter and sailing um coupons the transfer coupons themselves you get both in a pack for 3300 pearls and then you'll get 11 sailing xp scrolls as a bonus with that uh, and then the Ilias island storage is uh, on sale for 360 pearls uh, art daily artisan memory pack available each day it is 89 pearls it gives you five artisans 20 crons and five mem frags then we've got a weekly one at 1680 pearls it's 50 artisans and then 25 memory fragments and then you choose uh two from the list below pure magical blackstone or flawless magical blackstone times 5 15 on the pures if you wanted to get that or we have a big pack here for 7350 pearls it's 240 artisans uh, then a mystical artisans memory bundle which is like the rng one for more artisans then an ultimate custom enhancement pack which also part of that includes 20 more artisans as well not a terrible value all things considered uh, we've got an all-in-one pack available at 3300 pearls it's a premium outfit box and then we have uh, storage and transaction fairy some inventory expansion celestial horses spirit and 50 crown stones a bonus you'll get 10 item drop scrolls in a custom box of convenience we have a reset to new getting new loyalty items that are in there We've got Cronstones, Layla's Petals. We've got different uh, Blackstones available and some expansion coupons as well. And the weekly outfit set this week is the Water Lily Tamer outfit. It's 2720 pearls, as is usual. So there you guys have it for the patch notes and the Pearl Shop for this week. Definitely looking forward to the Arena Solaire coming out next week. Uh, hopefully there have been some more tweaks and things since the last set we had on the uh, Global Labs was released, but I I'm, I'm looking forward to it either way. Let me know what you guys think about what's going on in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. You can jump on over there, drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey,